Alright, welcome back to Ultra Review, episode number 22. We're reviewing episode 13 to 15. I was hoping to do 16 as well, but not enough time for that. So, 13 is a standalone episode where we have this alien spacecraft, which just, they come on the radar. We have people from the V3 space station. Where they fire on the damn thing. And they, of course lose a lot of their patrol. Except their captain. He's the one who survives. And the captain turns out he's no friend of the captain of the Ultra Guard. Okay. So. And he's able to. And of course there's an Ultra 1. Which had uh, Fubushi and Akashi I think it is. Um, where they are in fact shot down. But they do merge landing. But then they're actually captured by the aliens of this of this episode. We get a lot of character moment where apparently that it's revealed that that the captain has known this guy since like well, officer school, the good friends. He's basically no nonsense. He constantly is smoking. Yeah, when, when he's not flying, he is he is smoking up a chimney. He probably smokes more than any other character the whole episode. Which uh that's bad for your health to do that. So <clears throat> Yeah. So pretty much basically like the plan is they have the aliens plan is to get this create copies of the people they captured to go steal fuel from the Ultra Guard base. Solid fuel. They don't say exactly, but it's maybe maybe they're out of gas. So they need to borrow some gasoline. So Dan immediately notices that there's something wrong with these two because their eyes are not human. So they fall, he follows them and they shoot at him. And then he shoots them. And of course the captain's like, what did you do that for? You killed them. They were imposters. And the captain of the V3 satellite confirms these two these two deaf imposters. He he basically believes Dan. So the plan is to well, make an exchange. We want officers back. You want fuel? Let's make a trade. They get the fuel, but not the officers. About to land, and then they're shot upon by the by the UFO. And luck enough, all, and of course, and of course, they send out a, a a capsule, which turns out to be the monster of the episode. It's almost like they have to have a kaiju monster because it's it's part of the franchise. We can have an Ultraman. We can have a Kaiju every episode because it's a Kaiju series. So, yeah, Senai Kaiju, who is basically like like a giant jellyfish. No, it's like um, a starfish. Yeah, and Ultra Seven has a tough time battling this damn thing. And the only way he beats it is by using the move that, like, this was the first time I've seen him use this, this episode. Where he does this with his arm, and he fires a beam from it. Now, Ultra, the Ultraman, he did that too. I was kind of surprised he did it. So, could this basically prove a theory that they're from the same species? Though, in later stuff, a spinoff for him, he basically is currently the only Ultraman, Ultra person to come to Earth. Despite his appearances in other series. Yeah, it's an Ultra continuity. Where basically this series is canon, but nothing else. I will eventually get to the Heisei Ultra 7, which probably looks very interesting. But I will get to that when I get up to it. It'll be a while before I get to it. So, pretty much basically with this one, like, where they if he fights the Kaiju, beats it. And then the UFO is taken out by the two captains. The other cap takes Ultra Hawk 2 to space. And... Unknown if he sends it back. I thought that was kind of weird that they couldn't send somebody with them so they can drop him off at the space station, take the Ultra Hawk back. No, just him piling a damn thing, which I found that interesting. I like the fact the staff officer gives him a key to use the, the Ultra Hawk, which was a spare Ultra Hawk one, which I could have sworn this thing was brought down. Maybe they brought it back. Who knows? But it's a very interesting episode. As for what, what the planet these aliens were. Aside from getting the fuel, it's not really stated. It, it just basically start opening fire. Like, I get the fact a lot of these aliens' plan is to invade the planet. It's like, 
what exactly was the plan here? But in the case of the, of the next two episodes, there is a plan. It's the, it's the franchise's first ever two-parter. Ultragar goes west. Where it's basically, get this, a James Bond-esque two-parter. Where we start off with this guy scuba diving, coming out of the water, and then a boat blows up. Now, I saw this, I'm like, did Super Mario Bros. borrow this from Goldfinger? Because this is a very similar opening to Goldfinger. They use pretty much basically the same type of opening. Where he goes to his own car, and... And by the way, the whole reason why this whole explosion thing happened... Yeah, it's kind of ignored. And then we see him following a woman... And we see these people getting killed. One person gets shot, and the woman takes a taxi. I don't know what the heck is up with that. He just follows her outside this church. And why he follows her is not really explained. It's like, what the heck is up with this? And then all of a sudden, oh yeah, they're doing murders. And of course, Ultra Guard can't exactly participate because it's not their jurisdiction. Because, of course, they're meant to the earth, not solve murders. That's by. Everybody really wanted to chip in. Kevin's like, no. And then he's called the staff up was revealed. Oh yeah, the murders. Uh, they're actually caused by aliens. By the alien Pritra. Which, of course, they're the reason why they're doing this. Is because all those people who died were TDF scientists. In disguise. And the thing, okay, so he does explain of how, of why the heck the aliens are attacking. So they sent a observation rocket to their planet, which was mission was proved because they just went to the planet, did some scans. That's it. So the aliens of that world think that was an attack rocket. So their response is to attempt a full scale invasion of Earth. Just because they said observation rocket. So, there's a lot of spy stuff here. And then, of course, they chase. Uh, there's, like, somebody. And, of course, there's these two scientists bringing from Antarctica, of all places. Which I'm like, yeah, there is anything in their episode. And, by the way, the guy from the beginning. He, he's not shown again until, like, toward the end of the first first half of this for first half of this two parter when he knocks the brooch off the scientist they, who they were escorting her name is Anne Anne Anderson so it turns out she was a spy who informed about all this stuff here because it's kind of explained that she kidnapped the real Anne and then of course Dan finds her just by sheer coincidence, even though that the S, that by the way, the guy at the beginning, it turns out he was Anne's escort. And the only reason why he can't prove his identity because his passport and ID were stolen. Did they follow this? No. It's almost like basically it's like they had a half of a plan for a story, but I figured, oh, this, this whole show is about alien invaders. Let's throw in aliens because we can. By the way, does he do anything after that really cool opening? No, he doesn't. He just stands around, just falls on Anne. He does practically nothing. From what I've read, apparently he was that bigger, bigger role in the actual script, but they changed it for some reason to where it's like you gotta give out a dialogue. I love the dialogue for this two-parter, but it felt as though basically like they could have used. Could have put, put stuff back in from the rewrite, but no, we have to change to whatever this was. So then we have a really cool ending to this first two first half of this two parter, where they have this robot show up at the lab, a bit making weapons. Uh, I've heard this thing is referred to as King Joe. This this robot is it's a spaceship turns into a robot, and Ultra Seven cannot beat the damn thing, and then and then it knocks it down. Then he gets away, where it can't be beaten by the boomerang in his head, the arm, or the laser in his head. I'm like, that's interesting. So, at first, like, okay, so let's just basically just arrange to 
get the real Anne back by having Dan randomly find the spy where he's in the observation tower nearby. I think because they're in, I'm not sure where this up. It could, it, I highly thought it was Tokyo Tower because it's a version of it anyways because it could be that. So he just finds her, even though it was the escort's job to find her. So Dan finds her, confronts her, and she figures, oh yeah, you're the alien who works for Ultra Guard. Ultra 7. And they arrange for her to be released in exchange for the aliens to leave the plant. Everything goes good until they get the, it gets the scientist back and she's lost her memory. And thanks to off-screen shock treatment, they get her memory back and, oh yeah, she knows the metal to beat them. And they release a robot and Ultra fights damn thing. And this is the first time the main monster of the episode is not defeated by Ultra 7. It's defeated by the humans. I'm like, that's interesting. I gotta admit, that doesn't happen very often, especially in Ultra Ultraman, this happened maybe once or twice, where the, the the kaiju of the episode is defeated by the humans. A lot of times, it's usually the hero of the show. And after he beats it in the episode, like, everything is all wrapped up, and... Like, and then he yells, like, hey, hey, he's like... Are you saying, like, wait, is the end of the episode? I thought this was kind of a weird ending. Kind of a very odd two-part, not terrible per se, but I like good, I like the fight scenes. This one, but the biggest problem with this two-part is its inconsistent plot. That's the problem with this two-parter. But not much to say about this episode. I still enjoy Ultra Seven. He he's of course really good. So that's it for today's review. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, to notifications, and do not hit the like button. Next we have a comic corner. I'm calling night. Okay, next you. Bye.